welcome back to this day. Joining us now is Mark Mannon, president with the El Toro Water District. District, Mark, so nice to meet you. Yeah. I'm trying to talk today. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So first off, today's topic is lead exposure, and it can cause serious health problems, you know, if too much enters the body through drinking water or other sources. So tell us about the history with this issue. Yeah, so basically the, the biggest goal is we want to prevent it before it even gets to you. Yeah. And in 1986, Congress amended uh, Safe Drinking Water Act prohibiting the use of lead in water pipes. And also they banned, in 1978, they le uh, banned lead in paint. So they, this has been something that they've been working on for since the 70s. Yeah. Wow, quite some time. Mm -hmm. And so so what happened in, looking at the timeline as well, in 1991 regarding this issue? Yeah, so in 91, the United States EPA published the first lead and copper rule. And every state has to abide by this and comply with it. Uh, so we uh, test every three years for lead and check the parts per billion. And uh, as a result, never have had any problems in that. And then That's in uh, 2021, they came up with the lead and copper rule revisions, and mainly because of what happened in Flint, Michigan. And uh, in 24, now they have some even more serious, uh, and they require utilities to currently identify all service line materials in the distribution system. And this puts a lot of, uh, it's a big task for ETWD, but who else? would be able to do this, right? and a water agency would, but uh, it's not the normal course of business, but we're up to the challenge. Okay, so what happened, you said, in 2021 in Michigan, or whatever, what was? Well, in 2021, lead and copper rule revisions came out. Okay. And then now they've come down with that we have to check and make sure that uh, there aren't lead pipes either in our system or going to the customer's house. Okay, gotcha. And then, so there's so there's more plans then for you said for checking it. It'll be in 2024, and then what else happens that you're trying to do for 2032? So uh, even before that, we have to inventory everything by October of this year. Okay. So we've got a deadline coming up in October, and then in uh, 2032, they've also set forth monitoring school and childcare facilities, and that sampling needs to be done in October of 2032. And then in 2037, the ultimate objective is to eliminate all lead in all service lines throughout the entire country. Okay, all right, great. So this year it's gonna be starting like with homes and that kind of thing, and then... So we take an inventory to see what we're facing. Yeah. And then go from there. Okay, all right, makes sense. Um, and so it, explain us our next slide, like how this is done, what we're looking at when you take are taking inventory. Okay, so uh, you have the water main, and that goes into the meter, and that's our line. And we definitely always test that. But what we also need to do now is go from the meter into the person's house. That's the responsibility of the customer, but they put it upon us to test that also. And as a result, we have to excavate uh, dirt around that uh, area from the meter to the house and uh, check and make sure that's not lead pipe. Okay, wow. So yeah, so there's going to be a lot of work at people's homes then. Right. It won't really bother us in the village because there's a lot of 15 unit manors, okay. so there's only one meter. So we won't see a lot of that here, except there are some, you know, townhomes and single family homes here. Uh, but it, it, it won't be as much as in the other community. How many percentages uh, like of the homes here in the village will be tested? Well, uh, they want us to come up with a 95% accuracy rate, and of which that's going to take about 20% of the service lines in our water district. Okay, all right, great. And then, so moving to the next slide, um, and this shows more about the things that'll be happening with these field investigations. Right, so we have 13,192 service connections and after reviewing our records, uh, we had uh, records for 1,576. 
So that means that 11,616 service lines are unknown materials. Now, we don't anticipate any of these being led, um, you know, but we're going to uh, do a, a test and a sampling to make sure that we don't find any. Okay. That we don't. And so are these, like, were the pipe at one time, were the pipes made out of lead? Is that how? Not in this area. Luckily, okay. we didn't see that. But in some parts of the country, they did use lead. And... Uh, so they have to deal with that. Okay, but, so that was probably just before we knew how bad lead was. Right, and then uh, copper was mainly used here on the West Coast, thank God. So as a result, we don't have the issue that some other areas have. Yeah, and is this something now that they're gonna, once you do these you know, investigations and find out what for sure is, is there, is there gonna be some kind of record keeping somewhere? Yeah, we're gonna take advantage of all <laughs> this data and, uh, and, and have uh, solid records going forward. But we don't anticipate any lead pipes. We haven't seen any in the past, and so far we're not seeing anything now. So we don't feel it'll be in it. But we still have to prove to the state that there aren't okay. any. Okay. And so what studies have you guys done like in the past that you know, makes you feel pretty confident that we're not gonna find well, anything Well, every now? three years we, we have to study and make sure there's no lead in our water as it is. And we've never had a, a showing uh, okay. then. So we feel that uh, there aren't any lead. And, and in all the work that our service people have done over the years, they haven't come across lead pipes. Okay. And how long, how many years have you guys been testing for that? Uh, I couldn't tell you that, but it's every three years now that we yeah. have to test for uh, what the level of lead in our water okay. is. Okay. And so those levels like haven't gone up? Well, they're or? tiny. They're like one part per billion. Okay. And that's almost nothing because, uh, you know, the accuracy of the testing equipment okay. uh, could be off by one part per billion. Gotcha. Uh, interesting. And so if anyone has any questions about this or if their house, their property is going to be affected, you know, who should they call or talk to or so we are going to have a group called Blaine Tech Services do the excavation from the meter to the house. And uh, they've, they've done this for other groups, and they do it very inexpensively and do a great job. So you might see somebody other than the El Toro group. Our little logo is on all our trucks. Um, but if they see Blaine Tech Services, then that's the group that's doing these excava excavations. Uh, they'll also get a door hanger saying that this is coming. Okay. So you can be looking for that. So residents will know when someone's coming to show up. And we have a great staff that handle all calls, and you can call us at 949-837-0660. Or uh, if you have any questions, go to engineering at etwd.com. Okay, that's great. That's good to know. And then, so what about if... It, or does any of this, or is the potential that it's going to, uh, you know, have to pull up people's landscaping to test these pipes? Uh, usually between the meter and the building, there aren't any landscaping. But, you know, they're going to compact everything and pretty much bring it back to where it was. Okay. So uh, if or save the tree uh, or probably bush and then put it back. Okay. But we don't anticipate, there's not usually much between the meter and the dwelling. Gotcha. Okay. So it's not like a big area that they're going to have to be digging up. Yeah, it's just whatever the distance between the meter and your building would okay. be. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Good. Well, all right. Well, thank you so much for being here and sharing this information. Is, is there anything else that residents should know? Well, just, just to make some key takeaways, our district Sampling has historically demonstrated minimal to no lead in the drinking water served by its customers. The district does not believe there are any lead service lines in our system, and, but we still have to confirm, confirm this by the state. Yeah, so. wonderful. Definitely peace of mind. But, Claire, there you go. Well, thank you so much. Nice meeting you, Mark. Thank you. If you have any questions or if you would like to find out more information about this topic, you can email engineering at engineering at etwd.com or call customer service at 949-837-0660. Stay with us. We have Sports Corner coming up right after this.